ஓம் சக்தி த்ரூ ஃபெஸ்டிவல்ஸ் யூ கெட் எக்ஸ்பீரியன்சஸ் ஆஃப் தி அவுட்சைட் வேர்ல்ட் அண்ட் ப்ரொடெக்ஷன் ஃப்ரம் சென்ஸ் அம்மாஸ் ஆரக்கல் Om Shakti to everyone. Before I begin, I would like to present my gratitude at the holy feet of our beloved His Holiness Amma for empowering me with the knowledge and wisdom to talk about her among my fellow devotees, brothers and sisters globally. And then thanks to you all who are listening to this for sparing time and giving attention to one of your fellow devotee talking about the glory of our beloved his holiness amma thanks to the bangaru global youtube channel crew for giving me this opportunity in fact a privilege for me to be able to meet amma's devotees globally though in a virtual way but to communicate with them and interact with them thank you very much now let us go starting from the title itself if it sounded a bit cryptic or a bit uh ciphered up sorry for that but that was the purpose we wanted to actually uh induce some curiosity about who when they listen to this amma bestows do we disburse what does this mean how do we decode this disburse is it in the literal sense or is it has got any anecdotal sense or are we giving a new meaning to it we we will see it before i go into the decoding of the title itself i would like to quote one of amma's oracles given to us because that oracle is going to be at the crux of the title's decoding itself i will start with my version of translating it into english and then i will follow it up with the original tamil version as well then possibly you will be able to uh, understand what amma was communicating to us despite blessing everyone coming here and offering them all they wanted and long in their prayers nobody knows the plight of adigala amma when he anguishes about the fact that there is not even four people dedicated to spread the spirituality inge varuvargal athanai perukkum venduvadaiyellam vaari kuduthu vittu aanmeegathirkaga naangu ver kuda illaiye endru adigalar thavikkum thavippu ungale ethanai perukkada theriyum that pretty much what it is the key is amma bestows amma gives amma blesses amma turns our wishes come true our aspirations become accomplishments our longings become success our prayers getting answered which essentially means amma is bestowing showering her blessings on us and do we disburse the simplest meaning of disbursing is are we spreading the spirituality what amma actually want to do what actually is one of the mandates of the incarnation of amma in melbourne to itself let us take spirituality the very word in the context of melbourne to and try to apply the analytical approach to it we all believe in very much believe in scientific and analytical yardsticks these days isn't it so let's go with that let's try to go with the what is spirituality and why is it needed and how it can be delivered or spread or taken to the world so let's start with the what right what does amma mean by spirituality again if we all start decoding or deciphering the word and if we want to give it we can say worship we can say uh chanting we can say 
meditation, we can say yajnas, several other things, right? But Amma, being the incarnation that wanted to stay close to the mankind, wanted to stay close to the very race that Amma created, Amma also gave explanation for that. Thanks to Amma, these were the words Amma uttered in English, so I didn't have to do a poor translation. Amma says, Marvatur's spirituality is surrender, service, finally servant. So surrender, service, servant is spirituality. You see, when you try to think about it, what does this actually mean? I did say when I started this, we all love to approach things in modern world with their scientific and analytical approach, right? And anything that science and mathematics or analytics could not decode, either we discredit the, the problem itself or we don't accept the solution existing as prevalent at all. The problem with that is not every yardstick can be used for every measure. Similarly, when it comes to spirituality, the point is you don't need to have analytical sense. You don't need to have social sense. You don't need to have scientific sense. All you need is the spiritual sense, which can be synonymized with compassion to fellow human and fellow living creatures. And that's pretty much is what Amma says. And with the word surrender, what Amma says is, whatever that comes to Amma, the creator of everything that we see, feel, and breathe today, is Amma creates everyone equally. Amma treats everyone equally. And when Amma says something, that means it is for the good of whatever God created by her own benevolence, right? So we just listen to that word. And we just follow it. When we follow by surrendering ourselves, that becomes the service. Now, what is the difference between service and servant? Well, obviously, uh, in terms of linguistic difference, service is the act and the servant is the one doing it. It's as simple as that. But let us apply a spiritual sense to it. If you think of it, most of us in the second generation Amma devotees, you will know that you were taken to the temple by your parents or grandparents who told, come on, clean this place. Come on, make this, give people this. May I order in the queue. Keep uh, everything uh, clean and neat. Can you just do this packaging? Everything was service, absolutely. And what you did definitely is credited in Amma's books. But when we did it, did we do it with the sense of applying ourselves to it? At least I did. At that point, whatever I was doing and saying was, whatever my parents, my mother, they wanted me to do, I was just doing. I was just being obedient. I was just being the good son I wanted to be. But when you try to think of it, when you know the act, embrace it and do it. Say, think of it like this. I have seen doctors, I have seen solicitors, I have seen scientists reach Mel Marvatur, completely defy their identity. They do the service that is unthinkable in the social world that they exist in. They will be, you will find them in pits where that needs cleaning. You will see them taking off uh, uh, the banana leaves where on which uh, food is served in the Anadana Kudam. And everywhere you will see them not even revealing their identity, but doing the service. So there, they have elevated themselves from doing service to being a servant to the mankind. When you accomplish that, that is when Amma says the spirituality that the true, in true sense that Amma wants is actually accomplished. Now, how do we actually do that? 
So we looked at the what? We looked at the why. Or did we? Okay. Let's start with the why. Why should we actually do this spirituality? Why should I be thinking about someone else? Obviously, Amma is the creator. Amma knows what her creation wants. And if the creation itself, we, the humankind, are capable of requesting her, praying it to her, the compassionate, the, the loving uh, mother she is, she will give us, bestow us with whatever we need. And that is what I am doing, Karthik. Then what is that you mean by I am not doing spirituality sufficiently or to what Amma says? Well, the answer is, let us again go with an analytical approach. This world as we see it has got 7 billion humans living on it. The living creatures, let us not go into that count at all. We all know how much it is. Of those billions of humans, only a few millions know that the prime energy source of the universe, Amma Adi Parashakti, has manifested as an incarnation in our beloved Bangara Amma's uh, stature in Mel Marvatur. Of those millions, only few thousands have made it to Mel Marvatur consistently and have had the opportunity to embrace the love and the blessings of our beloved Amma. Of those thousands, only few hundreds have had the opportunity to surrender themselves in her holy feet touch Amma's holy feet, do the Pada Puja, listen to Amma's oracle themselves, and I've been contented with that. Now, if you think of it, how Amma chose us, are we the privileged ones? Are we the ones who were blessed? What is that that took us there? Every time in the world, when people talk about accomplishment, they always say it is being done by hard work, efforts, knowledge, and possibly people write off something saying stroke of luck. Again, let me quote a scientific example. In every scientific calculation or a formula, there will be a constant. That constant you will carry throughout the calculation with the formula. It will not change anything, but if you take off that constant, the whole formula will be flawed. The one popular one that we know is the pi. The pi r squared, 2 pi r, all those calculations that we have known, the constant in there is what in spirituality I would call as Amma's blessing. And why did Amma choose us? Why were we special? The answer to that question is something that we don't know, honestly. But if you want to apply it yourself, think of Amma's blessings as showers coming down from heaven. When showers come down, when it falls on the roof, it drips off the roof and down to the floor and possibly ends up somewhere. When it goes to the river, it gives the live blood for human and all other living things because we know without water, nobody can live. And when it falls in the ocean, it evaporates itself, go back and gives rain back again. However, when it falls on the sewer, that rain dog gets lost and becomes sewage itself. So the blessing Amma gives everyone is the same, but because we are in different places, because of our karma, our blessings, or it could be anything that you can put in the constant, we don't know where we are. But does that mean Amma does not love the other people that she created, other living things that she created? Absolutely not. The idea is my children, who I have blessed them, will always take care of their fellow humans and fellow living things because they know in a way they are related because they are all my creations. And that is why we should actually be following Amma's spirituality. Does it make sense? I'm sure it should, because the way the family works, you, you might have seen the father and mother, they work hard to provide for the children. And when the children 
stand on their own legs, they grow up, and when the parents need care, they reciprocate it. The world works like that. You give, you take. Whatever you take was taken from here. Whatever you give was given here, right? And that is exactly what Amas spirituality wants you to do it. So now we know the how, we know the why, and now let us talk about the how. Again, you might ask me the question, Karthik, we would love to do more, but we have got our own problems. Everyone has got problems and the magnitude varies depending upon where you are, how you are, and what you are. Agreed, totally. Because nobody can really dispute the fact that we have got a social identity, we have got a spiritual identity, and we have got a corporate identity as well. So we have a work phase to show. We have got a social phase to show. We have got a domestic phase, which we show it to the family. And then there is a spiritual phase, which is kind of a mirror that we see ourselves in. And we are supposed to be catering to all of these. How do we do that? Great. That's not an invalid question. That is a very, very valid question. And how do we do that? Given the race that we are all running in, we don't know what we are going to accomplish, but always we are running in a race. We have been told that. Or we create the race for ourselves. We, we just aspire for being a great engineer in a great company. The moment um, we pray to that and Amma make it happen, the next thing we want is, how do I become the senior engineer? When we, Amma makes us the senior engineer, we want to be the chief engineer or the chief technology officer or how can I start my own company? Nothing wrong in it. Absolutely fine. Because aspirations is what carries us to accomplishment. While we are doing it, the point is, the spirituality does not say that you should not grow. Amma's spirituality says you grow, you elevate yourself, but also carry someone along with you. If that means that if you are able to mentor someone in work, make sure that you are able to elevate them, then you have started doing your spirituality. If you are making a nice dish or if your mother gave you a nice dish and you are eating, you are enjoying it, and when you see someone else's plate is empty and if you are able to share it with them, just say that, hey, my mom did this. I love it. I'm sure that you will love it too. This is absolutely great. Would you want to do that? And that is how you will start with it. All these things do count. This is what I would say we are going from the surrender to the service state. Because we all know, we all acknowledge the fact that our very being in this world is because of the blessings Amma is bestowing on us. So I would want to believe that each one of us here believe 100% in the surrendering principle and we have surrendered ourselves which is why I'm touching upon the service itself. Now, when we have started doing service as part of our day-to-day -day routines, be it like uh, helping elderly people crossing the road, be it helping some young students to study when you have a spare time and explain them uh, about whatever subject you are a master in, all these things count towards something. Now, from here, how do we go to the next stage of Amma's spirituality? being a servant. One thing if you have to understand, I will take an analogy from the real life again, but this time not scientific or analytical, but more emotional. Let us take an example of our own mothers. Think of our mothers. What is it that was running in their mind when they gave birth to us? They took care of us when we didn't even know who we are. They fed us. They cleaned us up. When we soiled the mats, they cleaned it up. They made sure that we were healthy. They were taking care of us. Nice dresses, nice food, nice education. All these with no expectation at all. The expectation, what they might say is, if you are well, then I am well. That's about it. Nothing more than that at all. And that's exactly what Amma spirituality is all about as well. Right? Amma's spirituality gives us a living example in every home in name of our mothers. 
our mothers show us and obviously our wives and daughters as well who will be mothers in the future you will see them applying themselves which is why amma actually said that one of her mandates for this incarnation itself is raising and elevating the human kind in spirituality so what that means is they have always embraced the principle of being a servant which means they don't expect anything back in gratitude anything back in reciprocation but they just keep it doing things what is best for the one they are serving to which is we the children that's exactly what amma does as well when we keep doing this when we understand this theory this approach and we start applying ourselves what do i get by helping him or do i even need to think i need to help that's exactly what is the next level and that might mean that you might need to go out of the way to do it like i said we all have our own responsibilities in terms of social uh, personal and uh, family right but in spite of it we should understand that we are all jugglers and we have to juggle between things and we have to still make it happen because that is the very purpose of our life i would say and that is the only gratitude that we can pay back to amma but do amma expect it what do you pay back to amma the one that created everything and everyone what would amma take from you definitely not anything that you can measure with your yardstick that you have but what would be measured is actually by the happiness of people around you the people you have helped the life that you have inspired the life that you have touched and the life you have transformed it is typically a mind shift from thinking that whatever i am able to do i am doing it this is a phrase that you might have heard a lot you might have uttered it or your ears might have heard it i am doing whatever that is possible absolutely you are doing service amma is counting it and thanks to amma you will continue to do it and we want you to continue doing it but when we all are doing it what is that actually means everyone if they stop whatever i can do is what i can do i will not go the extra yard then most of the things that happen in the world would have not happened we would have not invented the wheel we would have not invented or discovered fire we would have not become a social animal from being a a carnivore that how we made we started walking on two legs everything was because people went the extra yard and we amas disciples amas devotees amas children that have surrendered themselves in amas holy feet have to and must go to the extra yard i leave it to your own discretion and judgment how much you want to do how much you can do it can be do in your society the one that you live in in your community in your country or anywhere else in the world the world wants us the world is longing for us someone who understand the purpose of servant and service and we are here delivering it amma's message amma's mandate amma said again like with everything that amma simplified for us amma has told us that the whole purpose of the mandate of amma's incarnation is to elevate us elevate us in spirituality elevate the mankind to understand spirituality elevate the women in spirituality and to kill the wrath of our bad deeds and make sure that we get the eternal living amma says in her own words when sages and uh, uh, great uh, uh, wisdom people have prayed and meditated for millenniums and millenniums standing on top of needles i have not appeared before them but i have come here in the most understandable relatable human form in this avatar if i should quote it in amma's own words in tamil aandand kalamai kododi kodi aandigalai 
ஊசியின் மேல் தவம் இருந்த ஞானிகளுக்கும் யோகிகளுக்கும் காட்சி தராத நான் இங்கு உங்கள் முன் அவதாரமாய் வந்திருக்கிறேன் பயன்படுத்தி கொள்ளுங்கள் திஸ் வாஸ் தர்ட்ஸ் அம்மா கேவ் டு வாஸ் வாட் இஸ் தட் ஆக்சுவலி மீன் பிகாஸ் வி ஹாவ் டு அண்டர்ஸ்டாண்ட் இன் அ ஈஸி அண்ட் சிம்பிளர் வே ஆஃப் அம்மாஸ் இன்கார்னேஷன் அம்மாஸ் பிரின்சிபல்ஸ் particularly around our spirituality and make sure that we surrender ourselves and we go in the journey that amma's words show as a beacon to us and that is a problem that we have today in our world like i said at the start we try to approach everything with a scientific or a analytical yardstick the problem with that is we try to measure amma's avatar amma's incarnation with the human that we know our own self and the people around us and what that essentially means is we know the best about ourselves we know the best about the people around us and we try to relate amma's incarnation in the same way and we miserably fail and thereby we leave amma's spirituality and we try to again justify our actions by saying i am doing my best in what i can be if i have to quote a renowned poet in tamil nadu's words kavingar wali he said in amma's 60th birthday nee ellor polavum irukkirai ellor polavum nadakkirai ellor polavum kidakkirai aanal naan solven amma nee oru avadaram endru you breathe like us you walk like us you eat like us you live like us but yet amma we understand you have you are the prime energy source adi shakti the one that created the world that has taken this shape and form of our beloved his holiness amma to be in a form that we can relate to ourselves when we understand this theory when we understand this then the surrendering principle comes out very easily the service will transform us into servants as well now we know the what we know the why we know the how now if we think of it let us apply all of this together to the title itself do we disburse enough when we do service is it enough of disbursing amma's bestowed blessings when we become a servant have we disbursed amma's blessings if you ask me i don't know amma knows amma is the only one that knows it but what i can for sure say is when we apply ourselves with amma spirituality principle and make sure that we appreciate and lord the blessing that amma has given to us and spread amma's glory and making several of the rest of the billion standing out of marvatu into marvatu tell them that the incarnation is happening and we are in the 80th holy year of or 84th holy year of amma's incarnation and we should make the best use of it and that is when i think you have started your dispersal journey nobody is saying that at least i am not saying that you should not aspire for bigger things in a social economical way you can always do it and you must do it that is what keeps you going but while you are doing that you should not lose the focus on your spiritual responsibilities which is what amma would want us to do for all the blessings that she has given on the social and the economic front with this i want to simply conclude by saying that if you think that amma's blessings to me is because what i have done then i would humbly say that you might be not understanding the entirety of amma's spirituality instead if you start thinking that each of amma's blessings to me has come to me because i will be doing more in a compassionate view to my fellow human and fellow living creatures created by amma your journey has started and you are on the footsteps shown by our spiritual beacon beloved amma let's start the journey let's keep going and time will tell us what and how we have learned all these is actually going to be really really helpful for our own self and what we will be 
conveying to the next generation either as our own preachings or bedtime stories but manage to make sure that we create the best future for mankind and living creatures on this earth by the blessings and virtue of amma's love and affection thanks for all the time that that you have listened to me now and i hope that the youtube crew will give us an opportunity to meet again thanks to amma for giving me the knowledge and wisdom whatever i believe i have to speak to you about amma and i will continue to thank amma for giving to give me up more opportunities to speak about her and speak about my experiences with amma in coming days with all of you thanks everyone om shakti amma vai ninai maname mel marvur amma vai ninai maname please like share and subscribe to the bangaru amma global youtube channel for more inspiring and uplifting videos like this one